Let me see if this will work now as well on Instagram. Fingers crossed. Um, okay. Right. Hello, I have, uh, hopefully this is working and, um, and that you can see me and ask questions. Uh, it's good to be here and I didn't know if I was going to make it today, I've got to be honest, because I had a few things that I had to sort out, but um, <clears throat> I managed to make it so I didn't ask any questions just in case I didn't make it. Um, but I've uh, decided to come and see if I can answer the questions live uh, for a change and just see a live straight away. Um, okay. So, um, I have been getting quite a few questions about, um, I'm very well, thank you. Sidikerthi, uh, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Um, I get some nice questions about learning uh, multiple languages, and I got one actually in my inbox um, just recently about whether or not it's possible to do it and um, which languages to choose. And I, I always say it's it's always best to choose the languages that you want to or need to um, study. So just doing lots of languages for the sake of doing lots of languages, it can seem like um, lots of people are doing it in, in the, the language learning world, and possibly they are, but the reality is always quite different to sort of, you know, making a list and actually studying lots of languages is quite a different thing, clearly. And I always think that um, it's better to just do things that sort of you really feel and that you sort of come from a genuine place and come from a place where you really have the time and the energy and the inclination to do it. Hello from Brazil. Hola, saludos. Hola, todo el mundo. <laughs> Hola, todo bien. Hi, Olga. Nice to see you. Um, nice to see you all joining. So I, I always think that if you're going if you're gonna learn um, multiple languages, then then always do choose ones that you have a reason to learn instead of instead of just picking languages because it sounds cool. Um, I've got to say a lot of the questions I used to get. Um, well, I still do, but over the years, you know, if you're a real polyglot, why don't you learn Swahili? Or if you're, <laughs> why don't you learn? Um, I don't know whichever language you can think of that you name it, right? Anything Vietnamese, Cambodian, Khmer. Um, why don't you learn Ojibwe? Why don't you learn this? Why don't you learn that? And the truth is that you can study them to have an idea of what they're like, of course, and you can get an idea of them. But what you can't do is is realistically learn all of these languages, if, especially if they've got nothing to do with your, your direct environment and you have no access to them. Amir, nice to see you. <laughs> How are you? So one of my friends um, in, in real life as well, Amir, uh, is, is on here. Uh, a good friend from Kazakhstan, the best country in the world. <laughs> and that's official because I've been there and I know it's a really nice place. Um, Pimsor or Michael Thomas, uh, Michel Thomas, Michael Thomas, Michel Thomas, uh, Pimsor or Michel Thomas, whichever you prefer, but I, I, I do prefer myself, uh, Michel Thomas, I've got to be honest, I've done both, and I prefer Michel Thomas. Um, I see a question here, uh, thanks for your answers from last week's Q&A, because I'm curious, I would like to ask you some other questions today, fantastic Olga, um, feel free to ask. Um, have you ever learned a language without someone to speak with, just yourself? I have. Um, I'm doing it at the moment. I'm kind of, um, I'm studying um, Cornish and Gaelic. Uh, that's, that's from Scotland. It's got to, and I don't really have anyone to speak to them apart from the class that I meet with. And I'm also learning a, a language called Christian Portuguese, Malay, and um, bits of Dutch. So, it, and it's actually really, really good. I really enjoy it. <laughs> but I, it, the question then come, always comes back to, well, how far can you go with these languages if you never use them? And and that's that's the thing is you, I, I'm very realistic when it comes to that. And I think, okay, well, it's fun to do, but really can I do it? Yeah, uh, for you know, sort of long-term, right? Okay, so uh, Fernando, you're asking uh, what method 
should I follow every day to get fluency in any language? Um, I actually don't know if there's a, a single method. This is the thing. I think what works for you is the important thing. Um, I know that sounds a little bit of an easy answer to a question that you'd probably like me to just say, take this blue pill every day and you'll be fine and you'll learn it. Um, honestly, it's uh, const being constantly in the midst of the language. So you're always listening to it or reading it or both or subjects and then you build up other subjects language so make sure you're being confronted by the language a lot and that you get meaningful or comprehensible input which is the important thing when you're trying to build up an ability to speak on lots, lots of topics greetings from Peru hello mitakulu yahoo kitos and sinole let me see let's see I could help it yeah I <laughs> can help you a lot about every day you now with Rwanda. I can breathe on to yeah, <laughs> Okay, so I see. Says that we're here to on David for Dansk or do spur to me on Bogen. They are Lisa Lee New. They hear that see fantastic. If for tell them from a language, do you think is the coolest? I find quite a lot of cool things cool, actually, Lincoln. Um, so from my home language, uh, which is Macedonian, I quite like that we have this ability to um, to to use um, the uh, past tense where you weren't there to work. It. So, for example, if I were to say, "My brother," my I, if I were to wit brother going into a shop and I, I would and then if my brother were to tell me on the phone he went to a shop um basically what happens in Macedonian is you, you have two different um verb tenses and I'm not talking about my brother said he went to the shop if, if I were to say in English in colloquial speech I would say um even if my brother called me and told me he went to the shop or if I witnessed him go into the shop itself I would say my brother went to the shop um, whereas in Macedonian and the same in Turkish and in Bulgarian, uh, actually Macedonian and Bulgarian are the only Indo-European languages where you do this, I believe. And then in um, it comes from Turkish and the Turkic language family. They they do this, or I think all of them. And what happens is you say uh, you use a to witness the event, and I think that's probably one of the coolest things that um, yeah I found. Um, so. Would I ever learn a pigeon? I yeah, I would. Um, I would learn a pigeon. I'm learning a. I, I think officially it's a Creole. Kristang is a Creole, and a pigeon really in a Creole. Uh, um, it's a kind of related thing. The way I learned about pigeons and Creoles was a pig. A, uh, a Creole is a, a Creolized pigeon that, that sort of starts off as a pigeon, and then people are born speaking it, so it becomes a Creole, which is where the difference between that and a language comes in, I think, is is definitely um, up for debate. Um, not being a linguist, I wouldn't um, presume to, to, sort of, to, to sort of lecture on those kinds of things. Um, although, to be honest, um, even though linguistics is, is kind of a science, I do think that, that there are there are different viewpoints as well sometimes. You hear from different people on these things. And um, some people have very strong views, uh, some people less so, but I would be interested in hearing actually from anyone who studies uh, that kind of field to know what you think. Uh, that's the, the generic way I learned the difference. But yeah, I found Chris, I find Chris Tang actually really cool. And you say hello in Chris Tang, how to say that, you say Teng Bong, Teng Bong, T-E-N-G, B-O-N-G, Teng Bong. And it's like from Teng is also like to have, like in Portuguese, Teng. Um, so, um, for example, I don't know, uh, I, ha I have a wife would be um, uh, your uh, thing, uh, mule. <laughs> mule is uh, a woman or a wife. And um, oh, yeah, and, and I can say as well, um, your thing, uh, dos gatos. No, no, sorry, dos gato. <laughs> you don't say floral. Your thing, dos gato. I have two cats. That's how I, I say it in Kristang. It's quite a cool language, actually. Um, 
um, and I'm trying to think what the word for the speaker is now. I think it's pad Padia. Uh, Vos Padia. Kristang, do you speak Kristang? You. Uh, <laughs> it's cool though. It's very. Um, yeah, a lot of the words actually are, are, are lots of Portuguese. And for me, a lot of the, like the, the family names are Portuguese, for members of the family. Um, there's Portuguese and Spanish. And then the other words, some of them are, are quite uh, Malay or yeah, something similar to that kind of way of thinking. Um, like the way you, you form the, the possessive is yo, is I, and then sa. Yo sa mule, my wife. Yo sa mule. Um, a bit like it. They, they, they liken it to how you say it in... Um, in Chinese, with the the, water, water, tai tai, uh, water, I don't know, it's It's very interesting. <laughs> um, okay, uh, how's Korean been going? Korean's been going well. Like, I've got my book and I'm I'm going through it. So, so right now, where are we? Twenty. 4th of January, I think. Well, for me it is. For some of you, it may be later. So I did, so this is my day 23, and I went through uh, day 23 of the uh, Talk to Me in Korean book. And it's been a lot of fun, quite a lot of, um, of, of pages, actually, now when I think about it, for the month of January. So I need to go through it and review it as well. And I'm getting to the end of the month, so I'm going to start reviewing uh, my goals and things and also update on what I'm going to do. So I'll write a blog post on Tuesday about that to go into a bit more detail. Um, my books from Korea have arrived so that I can uh, do a little bit of extra stuff in Korean as well. So I'm quite excited to show you into uh, the... Hela vilket språk tänker du och drömmer du på? Ja, alla, Olga, för mig. Ja, det är bara en fråga av som vänner i mina drömmar. Så till exempel här i Makedonien så är det jätte, jätte mycket jag är ofta på, på makedoniska för att jag, jag pratar det varje dag. Och min fru och jag vi, vi pratar bara makedoniska tillsammans så, så är det så. Och, och med, en, med barn så är det vi pratar franska, engelska, spanska och tyska. Så vi pratar alla språk um, i hopp och så. Um, ja, så uh, mina drömmar är för att prova. Jag har många språk. Um, inte på bara ett språk till exempel. Och det har du, vad, vad, hur fungerar det för dig? Uh, förresten så. Heritage just got into with the first thousand words of Egyptian Arabic out of 1898 words covering and then two courses on the memories app. Oh, the Memorize app. Wow, okay. Wow, Chanel, that's a lot. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of words. Good on you. Um, ¿por, qué, ¿Por qué has aprendido es, eh, Esperanto? ¿Qué te ha motivado? Porque tengo amigos que hablan Esperanto y por eso quería aprenderlo. Y lo uso solamente con, con gente así de guay uh, por la conferencia y tal y cual, pero en, en, en mi vida cotidiana no, no tengo... No tengo con quién hablar eh, Esperanto, la verdad, porque no hay grupos de Esperanto en, en Escopia, donde, 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 donde vivo ahora. Um, y por eso, así que solo así, así para, eh, para mí era un interés para saber cómo funciona la gramática de Esperanto, pero nada más que esto. Merhaba y... Merhaba, no sé si... ¿Has visto en script for Bosnian. It's really interesting using it for Slavic language. I haven't actually, no. Um, I've seen the Arabic script used for Turkish, obviously, and um, I've seen Turkish actually used with lots of scripts. If any of you are interested in that kind of one language with lots of scripts, I really recommend a video from the Polyglot conference that was, uh, when was it, from Reykjavik, um, from the Volo, and he, he did an amazing um, presentation, he gave an amazing presentation on um, language, particularly Turkish, and how it was written in different alphabets. Prizes for me uh, when when I heard the presentation the first time because I had never seen um, Turkish written in the Armenian script, which really shocked me, and also in the um, 
in, in the Greek script, um, again, surprised me, but um, not to ruin the whole presentation and to tell you, what well, spoiler alert, you know? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they're a lot of fun. Uh, I love that. What do you think it is about importance of learning a dialect of a language? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, depends. I think if you're going to learn a dialect or um, a certain type of spoken in Australia or Canada, or if it's a Spanish spoken in Peru versus the Spanish spoken in Mexico or Venezuela or Argentina. Um, I think it depends on where you have connections. And if you have connections in those countries, then go for the connection that you have. It makes, to, to my mind, little sense to be learning a pronunciation or dialect, if you want to say dialect, uh, depending on what it is, uh, that to learn one. So I, I sort of learn from people around me more than anything else. Hello, Ollie. I will teach you a language. Nice to see you. Um, let me see. Uh, you're an awesome guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you, Aaron. That's very nice. Um, let me see. Okay. Uh, I can. Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. Kamsamida. Greetings from South Korea. Kamsamida. <laughs> okay from portland what's next after korean oh there's so much going on at the same time actually uh party films there's lots at the moment i'm i'm, I'm also studying uh and uh scottish gaelic so i'm doing that i'm doing the 1000 manx words challenge for uh, the year of the manx language which is this year so i'm, I'm quite enjoying it actually it's funny because uh, some of the words I know in, in Gaelic are the same. Uh, for example, so to say I'm tired in 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 um, in, in Gaelic is hamiski, uh, and it's tamiski in 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 Manx. So the things are very similar. Hopefully, it won't get for me. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, what kind of language are you talking about? In, uh, sounds really. Oh, Kristang. I think maybe you were talking about. So Kristang is very very interesting. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it very much. Linguaphone or Michelle Thomas. Uh, Brian, I don't know if I can compare those two because Linguaphone is a written course uh, that you follow and Michelle Thomas is an oral method that you listen to. So it's kind of, it's a bit difficult to make a comparison between them. Uh, I think they're very different courses for very, very different reasons. So I would say that you could potentially do Michelle Thomas and then follow on with the Linguaphone course. Um, that's the kind of thing I'm doing at the moment. I'm doing, I did um, Michelle Thomas method for Korean, and then I'm following on now with um, with talks in Korean. ¿Cómo puedo encontrar recursos para estudiar Esperanto? Hay un montón de cosas. La verdad es que hay un, un libro de Teach Yourself que está muy bien. Um, si vas en YouTube, también. ¿Cómo se llama? Uh, y en. O algo, algo así. Espera, estoy pensando en cómo se El título era. Pero hay un curso en, en YouTube también. Hay todos los vídeos. Y se puede ver, se puede buscar. Um, ¿Cómo se llamaba? Pasporto a la tuta mundo. Ajá, pasporto a la tuta mundo. Así es. Y hay un, una serie de vídeos. Y se puede seguir todos los vídeos. Así por orden. Y aprender el idioma así. Uh, pero en lo que se refiere como libro, por ejemplo, yo diría que eso sí funciona bastante bien. Y también hay un sitio web que se llama Lernu, uh, Lernu, L-E-R-N-U, Lernu. No lo sé, de verdad, pero en Google sí va, va a salir. Um, y está bien, es súper fácil para aprender también. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Uh, ok, let's see. Uh, Entonces, let me see if I can see any more questions here. Uh, Recomiendas lingua, uh, Linguafon. Linguafon sí que está bien. Uh, la verdad es que no, ya no hay um, cursos nuevos, creo. Uh, ya no hay. Uh, ha cambiado bastante. O ha cambiado bastante, pero yo creo, ya, ya creo, creo que ya no hay uh, nuevos. Pero bueno, a ver. Pero sí que me, a mí, a mí me, me, me gustó con árabe. Es que estudiaba árabe con, con lingüofón. Eh, a profesora Abuela le gustó mucho. Teng bong, Marcos, teng bong. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, Marcos is doing um, 
uh, time with me, which is which is nice to see you here. Thank you. Um, to merci, as you say in <laughs> in, in Kristang. Um, okay. Uh, have I studied Arabic? Okay. Dobry večer. A как вас дела? Привет из России. Привет, Катерин. Как дела? Хорошо. Все нормально здесь. Ну, спасибо. Не свари. Jag tänker och drömmer på många språk, till exempel tyska, ryska, nederländska, norska, svenska, danska, engelska, spanska. Ja, så är det som jag. Så är det. Hi Richard, which language do you most frequently hear and talk in? Uh, this is interesting you said this, Louise, because this was Olga's question just now in Swedish. Um, and I said it's a mixture of uh, languages I speak um, in their dreams. Um, so, yeah, the one language, it's a mixture. Um, but most often, I think most of my dreams nowadays are in are in Macedonian, probably, because that's uh, the language I hear most and use most. Uh, so, but yeah, a, a, a lot of different languages. They are under it. They are aldrig har tänkt eller drömmat på bulgariska. Nej. Men så, ja, så är det. Ja, det är jätter, äh, ja, jättekonstigt, eller hur? För att jag, och jag tror jag har pratat bulgariska. <laughs> ja, i, ja, i mina drömmar så, ja. Tror vi lär oss i... Nej, ni, ni lär... lär äh, Mine sias, uh, nun tempe mine havas tempon uh, lerni uh, idon. Mine havas anu alian, ling, alian ling natura nigon, kai lerni ilin. Uh, uh, Postion mine sias en... Postion mine sias en alia jaro. <laughs> uh, mi, mi, mi povus farition. Uh, Som är sett någon tempe, nej, mina pensar svarar till honom. Bonjour Richard, uh, what are your recommendations for learning French? Learning French, um, it's difficult to say if you're starting from the beginning because I, I, I've spoken French since I was very small, but I would say, um, I would say that it was, it, it's good for a big language like French where you have a lot of resources to go into bookshop and to look at books and onto a library and look at the books that are on offer and see which ones you feel uh, best explain the language and deal with the language that works for you. Because it's quite a personal thing when you pick a book. Um, the languages like French, German, Spanish, um, even Japanese, Chinese, a lot of these languages have so many resources that it's almost impossible to to give a re one recommendation for people. So I, I always think it's best for you to, to check out what there is. Um, did you find French to be more difficult than German? Uh, Mark, I don't remember learning French. I've, I've kind of always spoken it, so it's it's tough to, to say um, how hard French was. I think writing French is harder than German because um, you don't pronounce half of what you say. So French gets very complicated for writing, whereas German's pretty straightforward. I mean, you pronounce what's on the page and, and that's basically it. Uh, whereas, whereas, yeah, you don't for French. And in fact, whenever I in, in my whenever I have to look at assessments in in French and, and in German, uh, more people will fail a French assessment than a than a German assessment on, on the whole. Um, they mix up sounds and they mix up letters and they mix up they miss off. So they miss off in marketing materials. Then generally, it's it works pretty well. Um, do you think that even uh, at level A2, uh, you can start to manipulate Russian? Um, I think you mean like sort of to to, to really uh, start speak. I think you can speak a language at, uh, at an A2 level, yes. Um, A2 is actually, you cover quite a lot. Um, do you cover all of the declensions of Russian at A2 level? I would imagine you don't. I would imagine you finish them at more like a B1 level and then you find the sort of fine tuning happens in at a b2 so you're still not going to get them right completely all of the time for a while but yeah of course i think you can communicate um in russian uh, with an a2 level i mean i i know that was true for um 
for the languages I studied um, that, that you could. I mean, in Russian, I, I studied, but it's kind of, it's a weird, again, it's a weird thing when you speak um, a Slavic language at home, it's very difficult to see other Slavic languages as truly foreign languages anymore. Um, so I find I find like Russian, even though my Russian is not amazing, um, I definitely do find that it feels kind of known to me, which is strange. Uh, let's see. So uh, Richard, you okay? Yeah, thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Vos uh, un gran inspiración para mí. Muchas gracias. Gracias a ti también. ¿Qué piensas de Close Master? Close Master sí que me gusta. Uh, jugado un poco con, con la aplicación en mi, en mi uh, teléfono, también en, en línea, en mi ordenador, y funciona bastante bien. Y para algunos idiomas también hay idiomas bastante uh, difíciles de encontrar en otro sitio, así que me gusta. Um, y lo que me gusta también es que se puede escribir tu frase, lo que estás aprendiendo, porque tiene que tener algo de sentido para ti, ¿no? No solo así como de guay, estoy aprendiendo frases y frases, pero no tiene nada que ver con mi vida, con lo que estoy estudiando y tal y cual. Así que funciona bien, en mi opinión, porque puedes hacer una base de datos de, de todo, toda la frase que tienes en tu curso y es mucho más personal así y tiene sentido, la verdad. A ver, ya es muy complicado aprender idiomas por familia, por ejemplo, italiano, portugués, al mismo tiempo. Depende de, eh, depende de tu situación, la verdad, Ani. Es que sí, mmm, podría resultar bastante difícil, pero yo, yo, yo lo hice en la universidad, estudiaba um, portugués e italiano, de hecho, um, este ejemplo. Uh, em, empecé con los dos, los, ambos idiomas al mismo tiempo y funcionaba bastante bien clase y tenía clase con, con, con mi, mi profesora y tal y pero había dos o tres personas en mi clase y tenía que dejar a un lado un idioma porque era demasiado difícil uh, separar los idiomas así que uh, lo puedes intentar y luego más tarde a ver qué tal qué tal va vale um, right, saludos desde venezuela um, además de hablar español como nativo, hablo inglés, italiano. Y en estos momentos estoy empezando a estudiar francés. Gracias por ser una inspiración para mí. Ah, de nada. Muchas gracias y muy bien con tu idioma, ¿eh? Qué bien. Uh, is it recommended to learn multiple languages, languages in tandem? Pavel, um, you can try it. And um, I always say this, and this is kind of what I just said. I don't know if you got what I said now in, in Spanish, Pavel, but I always say, Try it. If you find it confusing, you can always leave one to the side, uh, to one side, and come back to it later. You don't have to stick to one language, if you know what I mean. You can always, and I've definitely done that in the past. Um, I know people who did that at university. I know people who've done that for many reasons uh, because it gets a bit confusing in terms of you're studying lots of languages with lots of similar vocabulary. Okay, let me see. Es necesario tu target. Es necesario estar interesado en, en, en el lugar en que se habla tu target language para aprenderlo. Um, Want a banana man? Um, yo creo que sí que ayuda bastante. ¿eh? Uh, si tienes interés así en, en, el idioma, en, en, en el idioma y en la gente, en la cultura, en, en el país. Sí que tiene más sentido y más, tienes más motivación para aprenderlo porque quieres ir para visitar, para practicar el idioma con, con la gente en, en, en un espacio donde se habla. Y eso sí que ayuda bastante, pero uh, si tienes que tener interés, sería un poco raro aprender un idioma sin tener nada de interés en, en el país. Pero bueno, puede ser, ¿por qué no? Um, depende de otra cosa. Si tienes, por ejemplo, otra cosa que te gusta, pues podría funcionar bien. Um, nunca lo he probado. Saying <laughs> mucho um, merci. Hi from Colombia. Hello. Hello from Iran. Salam. Nice to see you. Uh, what's your favorite Spanish dictionary? Oh, wow. Uh, you can recommend. Do you know what? I've not used so many dictionaries lately because um, we had them at university all the time. And the, the dictionary that we used at university was. Um, so a bilingual and a monolingual dictionary. So the bilingual dictionary I had was Collins, 
and the monolingual dictionary was from Fox, which is box, uh, which is a, a Spanish dictionary that uh, uh, basically it's like one of the main ones from Spain. And that was really good actually for explaining things. But I, online, they're probably online now, they're probably just the same amount of good stuff. I don't use a Spanish dictionary very often. Um, every now and again, if I can't think of a word, but uh, not so often, or if like, for example, I come across a word that's maybe from a country that I've, I've not visited or I don't know. Um, most of the time, kind of like English, it's English, French, Spanish, German. It tends to be very sort of, um, yeah, if I come happen to come across a word nowadays. Uh, so I don't really use a dictionary so often, but I would say, yeah, the Vox one was pretty good. That's spelled V-O-X. Um, if not too personal, are you learning Korean with your daughter? And what's she doing to learn Korean? So, uh, yes, I am learning Korean with my daughter. And um, I'm not making her do what I do. Um, I think that's too much pressure and she's a, a teenager and I think she should um, um, have the responsibility and also um, control over her own learning. So I, I, I don't believe in micromanaging my daughter through Korean. So she'll do as much as she wants to do and she'll set her own goals completely separately to what I do. Um, but she's using Talk to Me in Korean as well, and um, she's enjoying it. And now that our books have come through, we'll be able to look at those two together. Um, and she'll use them as she as she wants. But yeah, absolutely no problem. Um, uh, so talking about that, I just what I'm not going to do is um, talk about her goals uh, publicly because I think that's for her to decide what she wants to do. Um, I'll talk about my goals, but I'm happy to talk about how things go with the learning generally. Absolutely. Um, how many how many months years time do you normally spend for studying a language to feel confident uh, for you to use your own strategies or for example um there's not really a time that it depends on the language and it depends how how intensively i'm doing it um it was so for german i was pretty quickly i could i could have a conversation i felt quite confident say so probably about three or four months i felt quite confident in german um but then for other languages i'm still I'm still, you know, still working on them. Um, right now as well, I, I, so with 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 the pandemic um, and with all of the consequences of the pandemic, I can't practice some of the languages that I use usually use, um, often like Turkish and Albanian and Greek, uh, just because I can't cross the border. Um, into Greece and uh, and I can't really go into town and mix with people in the same way as I did before. So I don't get to speak the same languages. So I, I am doing a few things where, where, I, where I meet with people and have conversations um, over the internet to practice them because they're languages that are important to me uh, because they are part of my, my normal day-to-day -day life and just aren't at the moment. Um, and even with some of those, like for example, Turkish and Greek, sometimes I feel, even after years of speaking them, I still feel like I'm I'm not very good, but <laughs> but um, it, I don't worry too much about it. I, I slowly, slowly catch a monkey, as they say. So I'll get there in the end. Russian reading and speaking, is it better to hear the word several times without reading it? My eyes, brain, mouth don't want to work together. No, I know that problem. Uh, this female mind, um, it's, it's an issue generally um, when you have, it doesn't necessarily correspond exactly uh, with predictable rules. And pr Russian falls under that, fortunately falls into that category. Um, Bulgarian does too, uh, much to my, yeah, my disillusionment. Sometimes when I read Bulgarian aloud, um, I want to put a sort of a, in Macedonian, you have a just a standard um, pronunciation to it. So the, the, the the uh, <laughs> the stress on the on falls on the on the prepenultimate syllable in, in Bulgarian that doesn't happen and in Russian that doesn't happen in a in a standard way, uh, whereas in languages like Czech or in um, Slovak or in uh, Polish, uh, Macedonian, uh, it does. You can predict where to stress the the, the words um, in Slovene. And in Russian and in Bulgarian, <laughs> you have to learn almost every single word where it's pronounced. And it makes zero sense half the time. So yeah, I feel your pain there. It's been online. And I'd say just keep repeating and repeating.
<laughs> as much as you can over and long. Eventually you'll get there. And if you make mistakes, it's not like people don't understand if you get it wrong because they tend to have dialects or people speakers who will mispronounce or pronounce it, address words in different places. So they're used to it. Um, best techniques to teach someone language. Wow. That's a big question. <laughs> um, I would send them an entire list of questions as to why they want to learn it. If anybody ever wanted to learn with me, I would I would I would basically have to interview them first. I wouldn't I wouldn't teach anybody, just anybody a language because it's a huge investment of of time and of energy. And um, I'd need to make sure that somebody was really serious in doing it. So that would be my first thing. Um, and then in, in terms of teaching them, it would depend on the, uh, the person because um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're teaching somebody or guiding someone through the process, it needs to be tailored to that one person. This isn't something you just take off a box, you know, out of a box and, and just give somebody something to do and that works. It, it, it doesn't work like that. I think that you have to, you have to get to know the per your, your student or students and, and then work from there. Um, I think, okay. Oh my word, Teng Bong Ron. Marcus, did you just write Kristang with <laughs> in Korean script? That's hilarious. I love it. Uh, greetings from India. Oh, wow. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, would you like to shed some light on your method of multilingual upbringing in a series of YouTube video? Yeah, I can do that, Hamza. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm kind of working in the background on a few ideas and uh, this year. So yeah. Um, bringing my daughter up multilingually, for example, is something I could possibly do. Um, my multi, oh, method of multi, yeah, is, yeah, I did read it correctly. Yeah, yeah, so I, I will, um, I will probably look at doing that. Bueno, gracias de nada. Opisomea, hey. Mita culo, opisomea. Let me see, thank you, okay, I love it, I love this. Um, do I speak Persian? A little bit of Persian, uh, not so well at the moment. Um, with practice, so Val reckons that with practice you can easily get these stresses. Okay, we'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> no, you can, you can learn them, it just takes time. Nihongo ga esimasu ka sore to no あの、日本語、日本語、わ、私の日本語はちょっと。でも、あの、え、スウェーデンのスウェーデンのあの大学に日本語あ、あ、勉強しました。あ、でも今はあ、日本語あ、話しません。全然話しませんあ、でも私のポリゴットコンフェレンスにあちょっと日本語あ話話しましたあ日本であ日本人あ英語あ英語あいあ話しませんあ、okay。uh, what is realistic number of days to learn language? Days. Entrock, if you're learning languages in days, then <laughs> you're on a completely different planet to me. I, I, I can't learn a language in days. That's 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 a, a really a, a really uh, big thing to I I could never do that. Um you you're far better than me if you if you're talking days about learning a language. For me it's months and years, um, I'll be honest with you. Um uh <laughs> uh, I just sorry, I just read something quite funny as I was scanning through some comments. Say how many at most? Hey Richard, uh alles goed. I look you very nice with life to follow. Um the your videos ben ik ben ik very full up on on at leer for my spans. Success with my yeah, but don't worry. As like Zine being a big year have uh, is it recommended to learn multiple languages in tandem? I think I got that one before. We see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so, Pavla, I wouldn't put a number on how many languages you can learn together. It's just it depends on what works for you and what and how fast you want to <laughs> to to move forward with the language. Um, uh, gracias. A, habrá algún método para para separar para separar qué? 
he probado con mapas mentales, uh, por lo menos con lo con una, es que no lo hago, no lo hago así con así en plan no escribo nada así. Yo lo hago solo por casualidad. Si, por ejemplo, estoy aprendiendo un idioma y tiene algo que ver con otro idioma que ya hablo, pues me ayuda para memorizar la palabra o la gramática y tal y cual. Pero a, aparte de eso, no, yo no lo escribo en plan para mezclar los idiomas en mi cabeza. Es que es más bien una casualidad del proceso de aprendizaje de un idioma y nada más que esto um, para mí. Um, ¿Cómo lo haces para tener un, un buen acento en, en español? Muchas gracias. Si crees que tengo un buen acento en español, muchas gracias. Uh, quiero hacer el mismo, uh, pero en alemán. Es que uh, grabando uh, mi voz, uh, escuchando otro nativo, uh, hablando bastante con la gente y escuchando mucho um, y intentando también uh, recibir... Um, correcciones de, de, de pronunciación en, en cada idioma, por ejemplo, si, si tengo, si, si hago, por ejemplo, de más, con, no sé, si esfuerzo demasiado, por ejemplo, un, así como en español, que para extranjeros que es bastante difícil, o R, por ejemplo, R, perro, perro, uh, cosas así, es que hay que practicarlo un poco y también con grabaciones si te ayuda y si puedes grabar también con la voz de una persona así de nativo, por ejemplo, um, la voz de un nativo sí que te va a ayudar para hacer una comparación uh, así de fácil y así de, de rápido. Así que te va a ayudar. Esa es una cosa que hago yo. Y también preguntar a la gente dónde, de dónde salen uh, los sonidos. Pues si, si está haciendo algo, dónde está la posición de la lengua, la posición de, no sé, en la garganta, así que si, si vibra o algo así, o si hay otra cosa que, que sucede, no sé, si estás, no sé, Um, haciendo algo especial para producir un, un, un sonido en particular eso sí con la cosa más importante para hacerlo bien y tú también con tus propios oídos vas a saber, vas a notar si por ejemplo eh, si has, tienes una grabación de, de un motivo y luego tu grabación, grabación de, de la versión um, eh, que, que has hecho tú pues vas a, eh, vas a saber la diferencia, vas a escuchar vas a, vas a oír la diferencia entre, entre entre la, las zonas, ¿no? Así que así lo hago, de verdad. Um, quise decir que para separar los idiomas y no confundir. Es, es, vale. A mí así que lo hago. Entonces no lo... Eh, es que no, no tiendo a pensar en los otros idiomas si, si no es por... Solo lo hago solo si tengo que memorizar un idioma y me ayuda a memorizar otro, otra palabra o otra cosa. Solo así, pero no... Eres tan guapo con, con barba que es sin barba. Muchas gracias. <ríe> eh, feliz año nuevo a ti y a tu familia. Muchas gracias, a Mario. <ríe> Lo agradezco. <ríe> uh, do you have any problems learning connected speech in a language? And do you consider it important to learn? Um, yeah, so, for example, there's, um, there's a really cool um, lady who does videos on TikTok, and she focuses on this in French, and it's really, it's really cool to watch, because she starts off and she says something like in french at school uh, you learn and then she'll say je ne sais pas je ne sais pas and then she says <laughs> but when you go to france this is what you'll hear je pas. <laughs> and it's it, it, it's running things together so i guess that's what you mean when you say running things together and it to go uh, but people say i want to go I turns into a kind of a, a, a I wanna, I wanna go. Want to turns into a wanna. I wanna go, I wanna go. It, so it, it just changes. And yeah, that's part of the language. I mean, it's it, certain languages do it a lot more than others. Um, I mean, there are some languages where you learn the written language and then the spoken language is completely different in terms of the, the words change so much, it's almost unrecognizable. Finnish is a really good example of this. So if Apisomai is still on, on, on the live, Apisomai will be able to um, let you know <laughs> that that is very difficult in Finnish. You learn this Finnish language and then you, you what they speak on the street is completely different. Um, let me see. Do you, okay, good afternoon, evening. Yeah, nice to see you, Matthias. Thank you for joining. 
if you're present. Uh, okay, so, uh, sans avoir fait de, des autres études, ma mère a appris à parler français en trois mois. Bah, c'est cool, c'est cool ça, c'est cool. Uh, uh, en regardant la télé et en étant babysitter, c'est possible. Oui, c'est possible. Hein. Je ne dis pas que ce ne soit, soit pas possible, mais c'est juste un, une question de, de vouloir, de, de pouvoir aussi, d'avoir la possibilité d'être quelque part avec des gens qui parlent la langue. Pour moi, c'était la même chose avec l'allemand. J'ai fait la même chose, en fait. En trois mois, j'ai commencé à parler allemand. Très bien, à, à, à vrai dire. Parce que bon, j'ai dû passer même un, un examen après. Euh, après trois mois en, en Allemagne et j'ai passé l'examen sans problème donc euh, c'est un examen pour un en fait, niveau euh, après les études universitaires à peu près euh, donc euh, c'est à peu près quoi B2, C1, je ne sais pas euh, mais j'ai bon, réussi en fait euh, et c'est possible oui. si tu, tu parles la langue et uniquement cette langue euh, pendant quelques mois ça, ouais, tu vas le parler c'est clair euh, non, mais c'est cool, ta mère. Chapeau. Hein? Um, do you ever manage to find the time to, to do anything else of language study? Uh, how do you manage time efficiently? Pavel, um, yes, I do. Um, so, I, so at the moment, I'm, I'm um, doing some writing and I'm doing. Um, I like to listen to other things that are not language related, in fact, as well. So I'm quite interested in, in a number of topics. I like hearing about science and I like hearing about. Um, things to do with uh, philosophy and religion, and I enjoy listening to debates um, on those kinds of topics. I like logic. I like um, those kinds of things. So yeah, I do. I do. I do like to do other things. And how do I do it? Well, um, I tend to do that kind of thing in the evenings or in the mornings when I first wake up, so that um, it kind of wakes me up. So that I'm, and, and then during the day I have to do work and. Um, family things and also a language study. Uh, so I tend to leave the language study and stuff for a time when I'm I'm quite fresh and uh, feel able to, to take it on. Uh, okay, let me see if I can see any more questions here as well. I need to motivate. I need to stay motivated while learning a language. Absolutely. Um, find things that interest you naturally. Uh, make sure that you do things that, that really genuinely interest you. Uh, what's a realistic number of days to no, no, I think we saw the days, months to learn a language? And Rock, thank you for correcting that. <laughs> um, so months to learn a language, it depends on the language you speak. So if you speak a language like, for example, um, let's say, uh, if you speak a Slavic language and you learn another Slavic language, you're going to learn it quite quickly. If you speak a Germanic language and you learn another Germanic language, the same thing. Right? language, romance language, similar thing, because you have a lot of help and you know how the language works. If you go from a language that's very different, that's when it gets um, uh, more complicated because it takes a longer amount of time to to commit the words to memory and to understand the grammar and to make it natural. Um, past the COVID, um, много смотреть фильмы, чтобы чувствовать язык больше. Да, я тоже думаю, что это очень, очень ладная идея. Я думаю, что... Ну, и когда здесь тоже я, я смотрю телевизор э, и слушаю радио, и, и это помогает, помогает очень много э, с, с, с языками. Но сейчас я уже э, подшествует <laughs> после этого, после ковида. Э, Это, это скучно, <laughs> только дома, но... Um, by the way, we're in Mexico anytime soon. Hopefully in October for the Polyglot Conference, but uh, we're waiting to see what happens because um, COVID's a bit of a problem. Uh, mm, uh, uh, um, Yi 
，不可以说呃，整完呃呃，但是我觉得呃，我明白一点儿呃，我更更好，但是呃，说的嗯、呃，我整完说的不太好啊。呃嗯、what's your daily routine for languages? Um, pandemic, for example. Yeah, I mean, I, I have classes actually. Um, to catch you, so I put them in my calendar and I make time. I and I specifically make time available to learn languages at certain on certain days at certain times. So yeah, it's 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 literally a case of doing that, finding out when you work, looking at when you work and when you're busy. Um. Uh, I think that. Euh, ça va être un, un, un meet-up à Bruxelles. J'aimerais bien, ce serait cool, pourquoi pas, un jour. Mais c'est juste pour le moment, c'est un peu difficile avec, euh, avec le Covid. C'est super difficile, quoi. Euh, mais j'espère bien, j'aimerais bien faire quelque chose ailleurs en Europe. Euh, pour moi, c'est euh, ça, c'est ce que j'adore faire, c'est parler avec les gens, causer avec les gens en plusieurs langues. J'ai l'occasion de, de voyager, d'aller quelque part pour rencontrer des, des gens. Ça, pour moi, c'est hyper cool, quoi. Um, I believe the poll.com is 2021 will be in Cholula, Mexico. Yes, that's correct, uh, Marcus. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, no way. <laughs> Thought it'd been cancelled. And uh, not yet, Enrock, but to see what happens. We have to see what the situation is in, in Mexico. We just don't know what's happening yet. But um, hopefully, there'll be something happening. Fingers crossed. Your Spanish accent has been. Thank you very much, Juan and Banana Man. Uh, you stick with a certain amount of hours a day. Um, not really. I just do what I can when I can, really. Uh, but I do, I do put in certain hours that I do. So for Korean at the moment, I do a minimum of, I'd say, half an hour, twenty minutes, half an hour of Korean. That's my new language that I study. The other ones, it depends. Are you a fan of passive listening during dead time? Yeah, I don't really get much dead time, uh, Chris. But, but yes, uh, whenever you can is great. Hi from Pennsylvania. Uh, hello, nice to see you. So, okay, voyons. Uh, buonasera, io parlo italiano e arabo uh, come madrelingua, che bello. Uh, il francese e l'inglese uh, e eh, adesso vivo in Germania dove ho imparato il tedesco e un po' di spagnolo. Uh, 29 posso imparar, impararne ancora? Sì, certo. Io ho imparato, uh, ho imparato varie lingue anche um, quando ho imparato il macedone. Il macedone è la lingua che parlo a casa, ma ho imparato quando avevo 20 anni, mi sembra, è la prima volta. E poi ho migliorato il mio livello di, di macedone e poi dopo ho imparato anche il turco, l'albanese, anche più tardi. Anche servo, ho imparato più tardi, quindi sì, è possibile. E, parla, per, e parlare anche bene, no? mi rifiere, voglio dire, una lingua con più di turco. Ho, ho fatto eh, il diploma di, di, di B1 di turco e poi sufficiente bene per, per poter usare la lingua in un contesto quotidiano. Eh, Uh, così come per esempio bene usarlo e, uh, e va bene allora sì, penso di sì dipende veramente della, della lingua e anche um, del tuo contesto um, the internet connection is not stable and your speech uh, uh, in your speech just an advice for future live sessions thank you Mario um, I don't know what happen is happening with the internet connection unfortunately grazie per rispondere de nada Sen hocan iyiyim teşekkür ederim. Ben burada iyiyim teşekkür ederim. Hello from Cholula. Oh wow, nice to see you from Cholula. Hola. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got pretty much to the hour now. So I'm going to uh, finish. I don't think we've got any more questions that are burning right now. But um, it was nice to see you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, look forward to talking to you all again next week. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. Take care. Bye-bye.